Happy Friday, Mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And join me today as I take a look at the Dread Star Omnibus box set. So please stay tuned. Now, before I go any further, I do want to say that this video was supposed to come out last week when I got the box set in. But as some of you all know, I lost my voice and therefore I could not make any videos. So I pushed back a lot of my videos, including my Juan Jimenez video. So those are all still coming out. Um, and before I even get started, if you enjoy this type of video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, because I put out videos every day on the channel, even when I lose my voice. So, without further ado, I need to give a proper shout out to my boy, Brooks Loves Books. He's the one that hooked me up with this, found it on a German Amazon website for a damn good deal. So, it's Jim Starlin, it's Dreadstar. Let's take a look and see what this is. Let's talk about the box first, and then we can talk about what Dreadstar is by looking at each of the volumes. So this is the box. It's from Ominous Press. It started as a Kickstarter. Uh, this is Jim Starlin's character, Vanth Dreadstar, this guy right here. And here are the three books that make up the box set. Each one is sold individually, or you can get them in the slipcase edition. And I believe the retail of the slipcase edition, there it is right there, is $299. All right, let's get one of these books out and talk a little bit about it in the build here. Um, so this started as a Kickstarter. And a lot of people were excited because this is Jim Starlin's creation. It started over at Marvel, the Epic line. Um, each of the books, by the way, retails for $89.95. Not sure what the... I think that was the cost of the Kickstarter, plus you got a bunch of extras. And we'll look at the artwork here in a second. But I just wanted to show the build of the book they don't come with dust jackets and we'll look at the binding here in a little bit but before I do that I wanted to show the box by itself it's pretty sturdy it's not you know as fancy as of course the Marvel or DC box sets but it's nice I like that there's Jim Starlin artwork just about everywhere here's the blurb as to what the series is about the last survivor of the Milky Way galaxy, and that's kind of where it all kicks off. Spines all connect to make one awesome art piece there on the spine. I love when spines do that in books. I wish more Omnis would do that. Now, let's do a quick size comparison. So whenever you hear the word Omnibus, you immediately think of the big two, the Marvel Omnibus and the DC Omnibus. So it's not as tall as a Marvel omnibus or as long so that's something to keep in mind whenever you see this word omnibus every different publisher has a different format obviously bigger than your standard trade paperback size and just a little taller and longer than your standard hardcover size so this is Heroes in Crisis and as you can tell it's just a little bit taller and just a little longer than this so let's get this volume one open and see where it all started. Dread Star volume one by Jim Starlin. Here's Creation Inc. Ominous Press, the people that put this together. Here's the table of contents right here, what's included in here. So you can see it features the first eight issues of the ongoing series where it all began with the Metamorphosis Odyssey, the price, and then the Dread Star graphic novel. All that kicked it off. And here's a forward by Jim Starlin. Of course, Jim Starlin is probably famous for creating Thanos, but he's done a ton of work for the big two. Um, he's done Batman, Detective Comics, not just drawn, but also written. Death of the New Gods, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Astonishing Tales, Avengers, Incredible Hulk, Superman, Warlord, I don't know if anybody remembers the New Gods. Oh, yeah, so if you've read a Marvel or DC comic book in the 80s, sorry, I had to skip some stuff that's not safe for work, um, then you've probably read or have seen his artwork somewhere. So, but he's probably more famous for having created Thanos, who is huge right now because of the MCU. And this is his own creation. This is Dreadstar. All these characters are his own thing. With this right here. This story called the Metamorphosis Odyssey. And it was originally... All right, let's look a little more here. And then I'll talk a little bit about the timeline of Dreadstar. Pass all these graphic novels. And moving on to... Yeah, right here. The ongoing series. 
when we get to volume two, I'll talk a little bit about the history and then talk about what the storyline is. Give you just a little quick synopsis. I just wanted to showcase some artwork from volume one and looking at the extras back here. This is a bonus feature. I don't know if I've... Yeah, bonus features. I don't know where these stories originated from. I've read very little of Dreadstar, so I'm excited to go on this journey. And he's got some kick-ass artwork. All right, let's look at Volume 2. So here is Volume 2. Again, the bookend pages and the table of contents. And from here, we have Dreadstar 9 through 23 plus bonus features is what's collected in here. Another forward by Jim Starlin, the creator himself, writer and artist. So the series originally started in an Eclipse magazine, the, the Epic Illustrated. And that's where the story originated from, the Metamorphosis Odyssey. But Vanth Dreadstar wasn't the main character in that. It's just where you see the destruction of the Milky Way galaxy. So that's kind of where everything starts. And then it moves on to the Marvel graphic novel number three, where Dreadstar tries to adjust to a new life after his galaxy has blown up. And the only reason I know all this is because I actually read some of this older stuff. A friend of mine was a huge fan of Dreadstar and, yeah, and Breed. That was the other character that he loved. And they were both Jim Starlin creations. And honestly, back then, I wasn't the biggest fan of this stuff. I was like, yeah, you know, I'll just stick to superheroes and tights. And he was like, Omar, this is superheroes and tights, except in space. Yeah, still, didn't sell me on it. It's not until much later that I started to appreciate things like this. I guess that's the way life usually is. Uh, but anyway, so after that, after it was uh, released in that Epic magazine, it was released as a one-shot. And that one-shot that I showed, the price, you saw the little Eclipse emblem up there. Eclipse was a part of Marvel, right? And so is Epic. So after that one-shot, Dreadstar became an ongoing series for the Marvel Epic line. And Epic are the people that also did Akira, of course. So And a bunch of other stuff. So that's where the stories took place, pretty much at Marvel. But all that didn't last, unfortunately, because I think in issue 20, it's either 26, 23, it changes over. Like Marvel decides to end the series and Starlin, because it was a creator own, took the series elsewhere. So let's look at the extras here in book two and then talk about what the actual story is about. I love the designs of that character. Anybody know, is that who Scarlet from G.I. Joe is based on? Anybody watching? Please let me know in the comments down below. And here's some extras in the back. So it looks like it's updated stories with new colors. And I have covers here. Maybe the reprints. Yeah. So this must be new backup stories that he's used. So here is volume three. The contents, by the way, are also back here. So this collects issues 25 through 40. So I assume this will have the very first first comic. Uh, first was a publisher at the time. So yeah, here's the table of contents. Again, you get another forward by Jim Starlin. So it's still at Epic Comics as of issue 25, but I believe in issue 27 is the very first, first comic published. So... The story of Dreadstar is about this character right there that I showed at the beginning, who's going through different changes. And I don't know why, because I haven't get, gotten this far, so I can't flip too much through here. But his name is Vanth Dreadstar, and he is the only survivor of the Milky Way galaxy. And then, through a series of events within the first volume, he assembles the, his own crew uh, to travel among the stars uh, there's a I know there's a cyborg I really I can't remember I haven't read this since it originally or since the 80s at some time not originally because I read them years after they were published because I think this was originally published in 1982 so I'll, I can't remember any other characters other than Vance Red Star uh, there's yeah this dude right here badass cat warrior but it's Jim Starlin designs and I know that his goal was to destroy the it's a church i know because the big bad well, at least at first was like this pope like character and yes it's adventures in space is the only way i can describe it or from what i've read so and the colors look modern on this okay so it's still being published by first here and i think it did end up 
going over to Malibu Press for a while. I remember seeing those in comic book shelves. And I think even an image, no, Breed was over at Image. Sorry, getting my Jim Starlin characters mixed up. Let's flip back up here so I don't get spoiled by that ending or anybody that's watching this gets spoiled in case they haven't read it. I know they continue past issue 40, but I think Jim Starlin's last issue was issue 40. I think Peter David ended up taking over the book. So it did continue, but this just has the Jim Starlin stories. Let me look in the extras here in the back. So here's Jim Starlin's portfolio of different creations and different ideas that he had throughout the years. A lot of these characters may look familiar because he may have used some, whoa. Come on, Starlin, give me a heads up for that booty shot. Um, a lot of these characters, man, is everybody naked in these last pages? What I was going to say is a lot of these characters may look familiar because, I mean, he designed a bunch of the cosmic characters. So this is part of the Dreadstar Phase 2 character designs. And then to all of you who stayed on for the ride. That's pretty much the extras in Book 3. Let's look at the binding and the build of the book because I'm not sure if you can tell, but the paper quality, it's a... I want to say it's a little bit thinner than what I'm used to for like Marvel and DC Omnis. So it's, but it has a gloss finish to it. It's got a glossy finish to it. As far as the binding, it is sewn binding and it lays over really nice because you have sewn binding and you saw that eye down there, which is perfect for a book like this. Each one of these books, by the way, has over 500 pages. So when you get the whole thing, it's over 1,500 pages worth of reading. Now, if you're interested in purchasing these books, you can find them individually or you can get them in a, that slipcase and check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you mentees, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now that was the contents of each of these books and the build of the books as well as the slipcase. Let me know in the comments down below if you pick this up, if you even remember reading Dreadstar. If you've never read it and are curious about it, or if you're a fan of Jim Starlin and get everything Jim Starlin has ever done, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. We can be found on Patreon and Redbubble, and those are great ways to support the channel if you can do so. All of that information is in the description down below. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow, every Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, I do a Q&A. It's a live show, so would love for you all to come in and with any questions that you all have that I may have answers to. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. More importantly, everyone, please stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.